Hi there. Thanks for watching. Um, I'm Dr. Iris Wang from RVF Australia, and I'm talking to you from my office in Chatswood on the northern suburbs of Sydney. So what I'd like to do is have a chat about miscarriages today. Unfortunately, this is a very common event, but I hope after watching, you'll feel reassured that most people who suffer miscarriages will go on to have a healthy family. So it's important to stay positive. Now, just to put it into a bit of perspective, 15 to 20% of all recognized pregnancies will end as miscarriages. So it is indeed very common. There's certainly a lot of misconceptions out there, but miscarriages usually have nothing to do with general lifestyle events, such as moving house, lifting heavy boxes, work stresses, personal life stresses, exercises, or traveling, none of those. The majority of miscarriages are related to genetic abnormalities of the embryo. So the genetic materials are contained in structures called chromosomes. So some bits may be missing or there may be too many copies of another one. So these may be incompatible with life, so therefore miscarriages. And these events are random, but they can be related to egg or sperm quality. So a woman's age heavily influences the risk of miscarriages because as we all know, egg qualities decline with age. So there's nothing we can do about age, right? We're all age. But there are potentially treatable causes for miscarriages and they are anatomical, hormonal, autoimmune and genetics. So I'll just give you some examples here. Let's say a fibroid that grows inside into the cavity of the uterus can potentially affect implantation as an anatomical cause for miscarriage. And thyroid gland, prolactin gland abnormalities are hormonal causes for miscarriages. And for autoimmune causes, um, say antiphospholipid syndrome, it's uh, not very common, but uh, certainly a well-recognized cause for late miscarriages. And then even less common are genetics causes. Now here I'm talking about the genetics of the parents, not the embryo. So an example would be balanced translocation. So us doctors will go looking for these causes and treat accordingly. But the unfortunate fact is 50% of couples who suffer recurrent pregnancy loss have no cause found. So this is the bad news. But the good news is, even after three consecutive miscarriages, the chance of everything being perfectly normal the next time is still close to 17%. So this is still very good, and that's why I'm saying we can afford to be positive. And for these people, there's nothing to treat. But even close monitoring, we found, which is serial ultrasounds and hormonal assessment, have been found to improve outcome. Don't ask me why, but the data is there. If anything, at least we collect a bit more information about this patient, about the pregnancy, and potentially this could help with subsequent care, even if that pregnancy failed. Um, so what I'd like to do now really is to finish with a bit of a story. Uh, about this lady I met 30 years ago. I was very junior in my training at the time, and um, I was doing some research, and I approached this lady as a potential subject for my study. Now, she just had a baby, and I found out that this was the first successful pregnancy she's had after 13 miscarriages, and I'm not exaggerating. And her problem was, balance translocation. Now, without going into too much detail, it basically means she's got genetic material on her chromosomes where the positions are swapped from chromosome to another chromosome. So for her, she's got all the genetic material she needs, and so she's perfectly normal. But when she reproduces, she'll split her chromosomes in half and pass them on to the child because the partner contributes to the other half. And when that happens, there's a 50-50 chance she ends up passing an unbalanced lot of chromosomes 
to the child. So, again, incompatible with life and therefore miscarriages. Now, this was the late 1980s, so we didn't have the kind of genetic testing we have nowadays, and we really take it for granted nowadays, that we can just do IVF, screen the embryo for genetics, and put the normal embryo back, and therefore reduce the chance of miscarriages and lead her to a success much earlier, right? But so for her, all she could do in those times was just keep trying. And even for something that was 50-50, it took her 14 goals. And also probably, presumably not all of the miscarriages were related to this balance translocation. And it also reflects the kind of complexity of miscarriages. And also, I think this story tells you how far we've come in a few decades, you know, from not being able to test the embryo till being able to do a lot testing the embryo. Um, so I think my main message for people out there is you need to stay positive because we do have statistics that tell us we can afford to do so. So here in IVF Australia, we are able to offer you the genetic testing uh, for embryos to minimize the pregnancy loss related to chromosomal abnormality, since I've already said that's the commonest cause for miscarriages. So what we do um, is that we will do an IVF cycle and the eggs will get fertilized and they get grown to day five. That help us to identify the best embryos. So they're called blastocysts by day five. So when they're that good, um, they have good options of being able to succeed for a pregnancy. And we will then biopsy those embryos, taking a few cells out of that particular embryo, and we test the chromosomes of that particular embryo. Now, on day five, we won't get a result. So we have to freeze that embryo. Usually about 10 days later, we get the result back and all these embryos are labeled, you know, one, two, three, or four. So we'll have the result one is normal, two may be abnormal, and so on and so forth. So in a frozen embryo thaw cycle, we will then put the normal embryo back to the uterus and hopefully improve the success rate, minimize the miscarriage risk. It's certainly something that is taken up quite often by our patients who are 37, 38 onwards. Uh, so if you've experienced a miscarriage or you're going through a cycle and concerned about losing a pregnancy, um, we're here to help you. We have a team of very qualified counselors and they're here to help you through this difficult emotional journey. Do give us a call. We have a 1-800 number and you can also find a lot of information about us on our website. Okay, I hope you find this chat helpful to you. And I certainly want to thank you once again for watching. Um, so for now, be safe, be well, and bye for now.